Now that we are happy with our uh, colors, we need a re reflection map or roughness map to go with it. I'm going to create a new folder called roughness and start off with creating a new material inside that folder, which is a completely black matte material. And this is our base we're going to paint all the roughness on. So I'm putting the color to black. And the roughness to white. Which means no reflectivity whatsoever. So now I'm going to create another layer with just roughness information on it. And what I want to do is I want it to be my base reflectivity, which I'll put it in around 60%. It depends on where you're exporting your maps to. I know that for subs, uh, for Mar Marmoset Toolbag, around 60, 65% is a good base reflectivity. So this is it. And what I want to do now is basically make sure that all the reflective parts are only in the concave areas, whereas uh, the convex areas, the, the uh, cavities are not shiny. So I'm adding a bitmap mask to this la shiny layer using my curvature map that we baked before. And as you can see, everywhere that's uh, not specular, everywhere that's matte is in the cavities right now. I don't want it to look this rough though. So what I'm going to do is soften this by blurring it out. So as you can see now, the white areas are matte and all the darker areas are shiny. So let's quickly add a filter onto this mask to blur out those details so it's not so sharp looking. So just a bit of blur filter on top. And this looks pretty good. And this is a really good base for the rest of the spec map or roughness map. So what we're going to do next is use some breakup, some cloud textures to break up the surface of the overall model. So I created a new material. And again, I'm going to just use the roughness and I'm going to add a bitmap mask and use one of the procedural textures that come with Substance Painter. Uh, it's called the cloud texture. There are several of them, uh, one, two, and three. I'm, I'm going to choose cloud three because it has nice large breakups and a bit of contrast as well. So as you can see, you get a bit of a variation in your roughness map. And we want this, uh, we want to be able to change the scale of this. And in order to do that, because it's a mask, we have to add a transform modifier or filter on top of it. So I'm adding a filter to this mask and the transform filter. So now if I use the scaling on the transform filter, I can change the scale of the clouds. Also, you'll notice obviously that there is uh, very visible seams on this map because of the breakup of my texture, uh, of my UVs. So a simple way to paint those out is to just add a paint layer on top and use a bit of a cloud-like texture a brush so it blends in and just with black and white you can paint out those seams just pick the colors with a soft soft brush and low opacity it's not going to be super visible anyway uh, because I'm going to tone down 
the reflectivity on this layer. So you barely see the, those clouds. It's just there for a slight uh, breakup of the surface. The easiest way to tone this down is to actually do it in the material. So I'm going to select the material again and just reduce the reflections or in increase the roughness. So it's still there, but it's not super strong. And it's a good, good base layer for our breakups. So you can also reduce it in the roughness uh, layer itself. So instead of using the material, but I find that it's easier to just adjust the material. So the next step, I'm going to create another layer another material and again bump up the roughness on it and instead of the clouds uh, texture i'm going to use something else like dots spots there is a, a a lot of a lot of different procedurals textures that come with substance painter one of them is the spots one which i'm going to use now so just quickly black and white spots and you can see that they add a lot of variety to the map. Again, I'm going to adjust my roughness and play around with the transforms. I'm putting it on screen so it's not so harsh and it blends in better with the with the map. that I already have. So I don't want it to override everything that we already made. We want it to blend in with the previous layer. So I'm adding a filter, a transform filter again on this one and just play around with the scaling. So you can see, we can see the big clouds underneath it. They're still there. And then the smaller dots and spots on top of it. So this is adding, stacking layers this way, procedural layers is one of the ways to do this. Another way is to basically add some roughness in paint by hand. So this time I'm creating a rough, another layer with just roughness on it and a simple black mask. And I'm just going to use a brush, a soft brush to paint on the specularity where I want it. So like make the lip more shiny. And if you look at the roughness channel, you can see what's happening. The darker the map is, the shinier it gets. And also add some shininess around the eyes, in the tear ducts, and maybe a bit around the inner corners of the eyes. on the upper lip and maybe on the bit of sweat on the chin. The process is basically the same as what we, we did with color painting. And here again, I'm, I'm just going to add another material on top. And instead of working with a soft brush, I'm going to just use a dot brush to just add additional layer of variation. The reason I'm working with black material is that you can always uh, grab your folder and quickly put it on screen on top of your base colors. And that way you can see what it looks like with your colors in the viewport. And also if you want to export your maps at the end, if you put it on screen mode, it will export as a roughness map instead of overriding your color maps.